Hey, how you guys doing? Royal Family International University. Uh, my name is Pete Cabrera Jr. and uh, I wanted to talk about something today that has been on my mind. Um, I've noticed that we have Christians, uh, we have a lot of battles going on within the body. We have those that say, you know, we need to do certain things in order to, to live right under the eyes of God. And, uh, you know, we, we, we have to follow the law. We have to follow not all of it, but some of it, you know, and and we can't just live however we want. And um, so we have to have boundaries. We have to have rules. We have to have regulations and all that. And and I'm not against any of that. I agree. We do need to have rules. We, need, we do need to have regulations, you know, um, in order to create stability. And then you have the other hand, which is, you know what, um, you know, we're not under the law anymore. Uh, we're under grace. You know, Jesus, you know, paid the price. Now we're righteous. And now basically... Um, because of that, we don't, we're not held to the letter. We don't feel like we have to do everything that it says. And, and it's just this mentality. It's like this tug of war that's going on in the church between, you know, people that are, are, are talking out of a sinner mentality. You know, they have this mindset that they're still sinners inside and they just can't get it right because Paul was saying, the things that I choose to do, I can't do. And so they're saying, okay, we'll see. He's a sinner still. He says there's nothing good in him. You know, he's struggling. He's fighting. He's, he's having these issues. And so we have sin in our lives and then the word says that you know everyone has sinned and falls short of the glory of god and and so then you have this battle and then you have the other side that says well you know um we were sinners and now we're not sinners now we're saints and now we don't have a sinner mentality now we're seeing things according to the throne and then we talk about okay yeah paul was talking about um, you know what he couldn't do and then you then, then they'll say well you know what in, in Romans chapter 7 verse 1 it says that Paul says uh, these are for those that are under the law so Paul is talking to the Jew not to the Gentile and so then you got this whole struggle going on in the church and what ends up happening is we end up fighting over doctrine and then the enemy just sits there unopposed because we're so busy fighting each other that <laughs> He just like, you know, just let them have at it. And uh, we basically end up creating a mess out of nothing, out of doctrine. And so I just want to talk about something that's been deep on my heart. Um, I had somebody inbox me um, the other day and, and they asked me, you know, well, what about the law of Moses? You know, you, you sit here and, and you talk about, you know, Jesus is our righteousness. But I mean, what, we're going to get rid of the law together? And, and I said, you know, Paul said, you know, is the law sin? You know, heaven forbid it's not. Um, but this is something that we don't think about as Christians. And guys, I'm not, everything that you were hearing, um, I'm not saying that it's wrong. I'm not saying we shouldn't do this, we shouldn't do that. What I'm doing is I'm, what I'm doing is I'm challenging you as a believer to, to use, um, to use the spirit inside you, to use discernment, to use the scripture and to just weigh it out. I mean, read scripture, go through it, find out how it applies to you. How does it, how did it apply then? How can it, can you benefit? See, I want you to benefit. I'm not trying to take anything away from you. If anything, I want to shed light on something that maybe you didn't see, or maybe you looked at it different, or maybe you read it different. And so all I'm doing is bringing a different perspective to something that's been there the whole time. So I'm not adding or taking away. I'm just shedding light to something with a different perspective. Okay, so I, I want to ask you this. When, when the message of Jesus Christ, after Jesus had resurrected, um, after, you know, we found out later on through scripture that, um, that salvation was also for the Gentile. Now you got to understand that the Gentile is someone that is not Jewish descent, you know? And so that means they weren't under the law of Moses, which means they didn't understand the law. They didn't know what the law was about. In fact, God was saying that the law was for the people of God, which were of Jewish descent. And so it was just for them. It wasn't for the Gentile. And so this is something that we don't think about. I'm not saying that the law of Moses doesn't work. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that, okay, we should get rid of all the law together. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that when, when they brought Christ to the Gentile, the Gentile didn't have the slightest idea of the law of Moses. They didn't know about the Ten Commandments. They didn't under, understand about the laws, you know, and, and numerals. And, and, and they didn't understand, you know, Deuteronomy where it says, you know what, the law will be righteousness unto you. They didn't understand any of that. In fact, um, Moses, the law was brought by Moses. You know, God gave the law to Moses. And so we received it through Moses. You know, Moses... Um, you know, he sprinkled the blood on the nation of Israel and he made the covenant between man and God. And, 
God said, I'll be your God, you'll be my people. So it was between Moses. Moses was the mediator between um, God and man. And that was through the nation of Israel, uh, the Jew. Um, what we don't understand here in the Western civilization is because our forefathers um, founded the United States on the Ten Commandments. And I think it's amazing because the Word of God works. But the reality is that the Ten Commandments and the law was for the Jew. It wasn't for the Gentile. So I'm not saying that it doesn't work. I'm not saying that because it does. What I'm saying is this. If you would have been a Gentile in the times of, of the first Christians, the law of Moses wouldn't have made sense to you. In fact, they would have never even presented the law of Moses to you. They would have just presented to you Christ. And so we got to find out how the church was built. Now, in Romans chapter 7, when Paul is talking, um, he's talking to two sets of people in Romans uh, chapter 7. He's talking in, in chapter 6, he's talking to the, the, the Gentile. And in chapter 7, he's talking to, to the Jew because it says in chapter 7, verse 1. Let me read it real quick. Okay, and this is uh, Romans 7, chapter 1. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. How that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. Um, guys, it says right there, um, for I speak to them that know the law. Now, the Gentile didn't know the law. The people that were outside of Judaism did not know the law. So chapter 7 does not apply to the Gentile. It applies to the, to the Jew, the, the per people that were under the law. And so... Saying this, when we come to Christ, were they presented with the law of Moses? Were they presented with um, what Moses had to offer? Or when they went to the Gentile, did they come to him with what Christ had to offer? Um, that's something that we don't think about. So where do you fit in in all that? Um, can we live under the law? If you want to, you can. I mean, you can live however you want. You can live under that law. You can live under Murphy's law. You can live under martial law. You can live under any law you want. That's your God-given right. Um, but what I'm addressing is that when you come to Christ, um, when the Gentile came to Christ at the early church, they did not give them the law. They did not give them the Ten Commandments. They did not give them um, all the things that were required of the law. They gave them the two laws that Jesus said, to love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, with all your might, to love him with everything you have, and then love your neighbors yourself. And it's funny because they asked Jesus, they, they, they try to get him, they say, hey Jesus, which law is the greatest? And we all know that um, according to the Jewish law, every law is exactly the same. You can't say that one law is greater than the other. So when they're asking Jesus, you know, which is the greatest commandment, they're trying to trap him. They're trying to make him say that one is greater than the other. And so what he does is he says, okay. Love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, all your mind. So he's saying that. And then he adds another one. Oh, and love your neighbors yourself. So this isn't just one is greater. Now it's two that are greater. Basically saying that on these two, on, on all of this, is, um, is what they hinge on. You keep the two, you keep the ten. So anyways, this is just something that I wanted to talk to you guys about. This is something that has been weighed on my mind. Um, a lot of us in Christianity, we're going in circles because we're trying to live our Christian life out of the old man mentality, living our lives out of old wine sacks. And the reality is that God has new wine for you. God has newness of life for you. And as long as we're walking around with this mentality, this defeated mentality, this, this sin mentality, hear me, sin is wrong. Sin is bad. Sin is cancer. Um, we should be considering ourselves dead to that, have nothing to do with that. I'm um, not by any way condoning sin because there's some people out there that when they hear this message, they're right away, um, their spiritual ears turn off and they start thinking carnally and start saying, well, because you're saying that, you think you can do whatever you want. But the reality is, if you knew who I was and you live with me, you would know that um, I live according to what scripture says and I live the way Christ has called me to live because I'm a son of God. I do it because I know who I am, not because I do these things. Um, it comes from knowing who you are. So the reality is that we as Christians have to learn how to function out of a place of identity. See, identity is key to the kingdom of God. If you don't know who you are in Christ, you cannot function in the things of God. A lot of men of God and women of God are trying to pull out the kingdom of God out of a 
dead mindset out of an old man mindset and you just can't pull anything out of your dead self. The only thing you're going to pull out is death. And so we get frustrated, we get tired, and this is why a lot of Christians backslide because we as Christians, when we come to Christ, they don't explain this to us. They, they talk about heaven, look, you know, give your life to Christ and you'll go to heaven. But the reality is that Jesus didn't come to, so you could go to heaven, which you're going to go to heaven. Uh, he came to lead you to the Father. But we don't teach that. We teach you're a sinner, get rid of that sin, and now you can go to heaven. But Jesus' main goal was to get you to the Father. And in the Father is love, joy, peace, and everything that you are because that's your identity. That's your inheritance. You can only get your inheritance through the Father. You're not going to walk into heaven. See, this is the mentality. We think our inheritance is when we die and we walk into heaven, and now we get our inheritance. The reality is that you can have your inheritance right now because it's in the Spirit. And so I want to teach you, I want to show you how to be free, how to be mentally free from all the things that are trying to drive you to the grave opposed to all the things from the kingdom of God to want to rise you above your circumstances into the reality of the kingdom of God. And so the beautiful thing about the kingdom of God is that it has everything opposite of the world. It has its own economic system. It has everything that it needs for you to thrive in, in the spirit. But the beautiful thing about the kingdom of God and about everything that I'm saying is that when you were translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his son, into his, to his glorious son, is that God moved you from one kingdom, which is the world, into another kingdom, which is the kingdom of God. And so the renewing of your mind is basically God saying, look, I took you from a sinner mentality into this mentality that you used to have, and you don't live there anymore. You now live here in the kingdom of God. You now live here in glory. You're now a son. And so by renewing your mind and understanding this, you can now maintain this. So it's one thing for, for us to set people free. It's another thing to stay free. See, we can give people Christ, but the reality is that we're to make disciples. And making disciples teaches them to stay free, teaches them to stay there, to live there. The thing is with Christians that don't understand who they are, is they come to Christ they go through the whole motions of doing these things, uh, reading their Bibles, praying, fasting, and all that, which, which is good. I'm not saying it's bad. And so they end up trying to figure out another way to serve God because they feel like, well, this isn't working. God isn't showing up. God isn't manifesting like he said he would. And the reality is that we've been doing these things out of our carnal selves, out of the dead man, which God killed. Colossians 3.3 says that you've been dead, that, that you died that you died, and now your life is hidden in God with Christ. And so Colossians 3.3 3 is basically saying that you were dead. Romans chapter 6, verse 3 through 17 tells us that we're buried with Christ, buried in his resurrection. And so uh, Ephesians 4, um, 17 through, through uh, 32 explains all that. Put off the old, put on the new. Um, it says that we haven't yet, we haven't so learned Christ yet. So basically, we're trying to function out of our old self and this is what happens with Christians they come to Christ and we teach them these rules and these regs we teach them the old way of doing things right which it has its place you know I'm not saying that it's not it's not functioning but I'm saying it only goes so far and so if you're in the carnal and you're carnally minded and you just don't understand any things the Word of God will still work because the Word of God is powerful but the thing is that when we go from servants to sons then we learn to function out of the spirit, out of faith. See, in the Old Testament, and during the old way of doing things when we had the law, um, we didn't need faith because the law made us righteous. And so we put all our faith in how we serve God through the law, through the word. And so when Jesus came, he was talking about faith, which was something that was unheard of because they had the law. Basically, what they were telling Jesus was, we don't need faith. We don't need you. We have the law. We don't need your righteousness. We can do it ourselves. We can walk out the law. And it says in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God, as he hath commanded us. So in Deuteronomy chapter 6, you were righteous based on your ability to follow the law. So that's what made you righteous. That's why you had to understand the law. That's why you had to follow the law. That's why you had to do everything in the law. See, the law wasn't asking you to do your best. It required, it demanded your best. And so this is why when Jesus came and he was saying, look, 
We could do it through faith. In fact, the word says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Reason being is because when you come to Christ, you are no longer the old you. You are the new you. You now become a new creation. And the new creation functions out of faith, which means that you now have a whole other system, the kingdom of God, which functions in the supernatural. And what we do as Christians is we come to Christ and we still come with our own mindsets. And so you have a dead man trying to function in the supernatural. So we're seeing carnally, thinking carnally, walking carnally, praising carnally, worshiping carnally, doing good works carnally. And then everything that God is asking us to produce isn't in the carnal because he killed that guy. He's wanting you to function in the new man, which is the new creation made in the likeness of God, which has the nature of God. And so now you can function in this new man. And so we as Christians try to manage um, our faults, manage our issues, manage our anger. So we have anger management, which is crazy. Um, we have management, you know. It's like trying to manage sin. You can't manage sin. You're supposed to die to sin. We have Christians trying to manage their life through the law, through the word of God. Okay, this is how we get it to work. Apply this and this and it'll manage. It'll, 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 it'll dwindle away little by little. We'll still suffer with the consequences. We'll still struggle with sin. We'll still struggle with all this stuff, but the law will help. It's like, no, kill that guy. That guy is dead. God killed that guy when he crucified Christ. When Christ was crucified, you were crucified with him. So... Here's the key. What we're going to be teaching is how to think out of this mentality, how to walk out of this mentality, and through that you will produce the kingdom's reality. See, the reality of the kingdom has to be real here. See, God already changed this. He said he gave us a new heart. Our law is in our hearts, in our minds. And so our key is to renew our minds, Romans chapter 12, uh, verse 2. We're supposed to renew our minds. Why? So we can prove it is the perfect will of God. So we renew our minds that, look, this guy is no longer, it's now this guy. See, God is not working on you, okay? He killed you, okay? God is not working on your issues, okay? God wants you to renew your mind so you can work on those issues mentally and understand that's not me anymore, this is me. I am now a new creation. I don't have those problems. That guy is dead. I consider him dead. Die daily. You know what? You're dead. This is me now. Who are you? I'm in the likeness of Christ. Everything in me is of Christ. And so I can only produce what I believe. If I believe that I'm not the righteousness of God, and if I believe that I still need to do the things that I've been doing and, and just get it right, um, I'm just going to go in circles, I'm going to get frustrated, I'm going to start seeing carnally, and I'm just going to basically just say, you know what, it doesn't work, and I'm going to end up backsliding. And that's the reason that a lot of people leave the churches, is because we teach them to see fault, we teach them to judge our brothers, we teach them to correct in love. Correcting in love isn't telling people all their faults, that is not correcting in love. Correcting in love is telling them who they are, telling them correctly how God sees them. God sees you like this. You're amazing. You're a son. You, you have everything you need. Okay, yeah, you're falling. Yes, you're stumbling. But okay, you know, that's not who you are anymore. This is who you are. That's correcting in love. Okay, correcting in love is bringing people to the stature of where God sees them. And God sees them as sons. And so the kingdom of God will never point out who you're not. They'll always point out who you are. It's always to Christ because it's the Christ in you. That's all we talk about is the Christ in you. God is amazing. Jesus is amazing. God put you in Christ for a reason. In Christ. Okay, everything about you is in Christ. Your issues are in Christ. Your life is in Christ. Your crises that you think you have are in Christ. Everything that you have now in the new is in Christ. All of God. All things have passed away. All things have become new. And all things are of God. Because that's who you are. All things are of God. That's who you are. You've been translated. You have a different... You have a different DNA. You are not the same person you were when you came to Christ. In fact, when you came to the kingdom with everything that you came with, okay, you learn to get rid of everything you came with. When you get there, you learn to let all that stuff go. Because before you can cross the Jordan, you got to get rid of all that stuff. The promised land, you can't carry this stuff with you into the promised land because it can't exist there. Only the new man can exist there. Um, I'm going to be putting these videos out. If you want to learn more about who you are, 
See, I can tell you all day stories in the Bible about David, Daniel, Solomon, um, about all the men of the God, the, the mighty men of God. I can do that all day long. But the reality is if your life is not being transformed, something's wrong. Because the Bible, the, the gospel, like, like they said, the, the gospel that's best preached is the one lived. And I believe that we need to be living what we believe. Okay, now, I know this sounds harsh sometimes. You know, we as Christians, we say, well, you know, what are you saying? You know, you're saying this. It's like, all I'm saying is that God is amazing. Okay, Jesus is awesome. Okay, and he's living inside of us as believers. And until we understand who we are in Christ, we will not be effective in a world that's falling apart. Because what we have in us is amazing. It's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. Once you understand who you are in Christ, the goodness of God flows because you understand what you were created for. See, you were created to bring the kingdom of God here. But if your mentality is, I can't do it, I got to work on myself, I got a lot of sin in my life, I have all these issues, as long as you're preoccupied with your issues, you will never get it. Because the answer to your issues is, this is who you are. And once you know who you are, you can produce you can produce from who you are, okay? Your reality becomes what you believe and what you think. And according to the word, we want our reality to be God's reality because we need to live with God. In fact, you know, Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, God said, let us make man in our image. See, the key is he's making us into his image. But we as Christians, when we come to Christ, we want to change God's image into our image. And that just it's not going to work, guys. We're to be transformed. We're supposed to be created in the image of God in every aspect, the way we think, the way we see, the way we speak, the way we talk to God, the way we pray, the way we worship. It comes from a different place. It comes from this place in the spirit. And so I want to encourage you guys, just, just listen to what I'm saying. Um, guys, I'm not by any way saying, hey, don't listen to the Old Testament. I'm not by any way saying, hey, you know what? The law doesn't work. I'm not saying that. Okay, I'm not by any means trying to get rid of the Ten Commandments or, or the laws. or anything. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is as a Gentile, they were never required to learn that stuff. Okay, and because of our forefathers here in the Western world, our, our, our forefathers created the nation under the Ten Commandments. And so now we think um, that because it's under the Ten Commandments that, you know, and I'm not saying the Ten Commandment doesn't work because it does. It'll work anywhere. But what I'm saying is imagine... Imagine how much more the law would work if you understood who you were in Christ, okay, and you could move in the things of God with ease, without worrying and being condemned by the law, being called, you know, a sinner and all these things that you're not. See, we're too busy uh, pointing out people's faults, talking about how worthless people are, when the reality is we need to be telling them how amazing they are and the worth that they are. See, God only sees the worth in, in you. Because we're not required to see according to the flesh. See, the flesh will see fault all day long because that's what it's designed to do. If your eye is dark, your whole body's dark. But if your eye is light, your whole body is light. See, and so when God said, consider yourself dead to sin, how does he consider you? Something to think about. <laughs> see, everything that God requires you to do, he's already doing. It's not like he's telling you to do something and he's going to do something totally different. Okay? So God is, he's amazing. He loves you. He wants you to get this because if you can get this, you won't have an issue coming to your God. You won't have an issue loving on your God. You won't have an issue coming to him with everything that you have. But the minute that you start seeing that you're not worthy and that, oh, well, I'm just nobody. I'm just, you know, I'm down here and God's up there and he's so mad at me and he, he's just ready to let me have it. Well, why hasn't he let you have it if he's going to let you have it? Because the reality is we become enemies of God in our minds. And that's why we need to renew our minds. We're no longer enemies of God. Once we come to Christ, we're now sons of God. And now we can come to Him boldly. I love God. I worship God. I serve God. I have a fear of God. But it's not the kind of fear that you think. This is a different type of fear. This is a I can't do anything on my own type of fear. Big difference. So guys, I love you guys. I'm just putting this together. Just kind of getting you going a little bit. But I'm going to start putting teachings out. Um, the school's starting up. Woo! I'm excited. The school's going to be up and going. We're going to be teaching identity 
on so many levels. Like what you're hearing, this is just the tip of the iceberg of what we're going to be touching on. You know, we're going to be touching on not just who you are, but what can actually come from who you are and how you can bring it to a place that it actually becomes a lifestyle. You know, I think the kingdom of God should be a lifestyle. Um, this is something you have to teach to people. You have to teach them what it looks like. You know, teach them, you know, I teach them to observe all the things I've commanded you to do. So I'm teaching you by showing you that, look, I'm not just saying, hey, look at the kingdom. I'm actually producing it through what I believe in Christ Jesus, according to his word, according to who Christ is. I can actually produce what the word says. And that's what a believer does. A believer produces what he believes. So, um, guys, I love you guys. If any of this has offended you in any way, please guard your heart. My intent is not to offend you. My intent is not to knock down your ways of doing things. Okay? What I'm, what I'm doing is I've been called, okay, to help believers in Christ come to a place where they can function hand in hand with the Spirit of God and actually do things um, that are amazing to bring people to Christ. You know, your life has to be amazing. Jesus' life was amazing. And you have to bring that off factor. And I want to help you bring that off factor. I want to help you bring this to a world that really needs what God has for them. And But if we don't have it, we can't give it to them. All we can do is talk about it and say, take it to God. or Well, we don't know. And That's crazy to me. If God has given me something, it's to give it away. But if I can't give it away, it's because I don't have it. So the key is to bring you to a place that um, you understand you have everything you need in Christ and you can function in it. So guys, in the name of Jesus, I love you. Bam! So anyways, I got these Royal Family International t-shirts right here like that. Bam! Bam! I just kind of want to show that to you. Um, I've been trying so long to get these shirts and I finally got them in. Um, this one right here, it's a Royal Family International. You know, sickness advisory, healing content. I believe that uh, we're sickness advisory, man. Sickness should like know that, you know, we have healing content. His name is Christ. His name is Holy Spirit. His name is everything that uh, he says he is wonderful, amazing. So anyways, um, who wants this shirt? You want this shirt? Okay, I'll tell you what. Send me a video of you laying your hand someone in the name of Jesus, right? And you say, I want my free t-shirt. From Royal Family International, I'll send it to you in the mail. We have large, extra large, and 2XL and mediums. You send me a video. You put a video under this with you on the streets praying for someone. Okay, and you say, I want my free t-shirt. Okay? Can't just be like you just praying for somebody. We have to see manifestation of the kingdom of God. Okay? If that's the case, you know. So anyways, um, it has to be you praying for someone and then receiving something in the name of Jesus. Okay, and if you tell them, if you tell them in the name of Jesus that God, God will heal them and you lay a hand on them and, and, and you say, hey, you know what, Peter, I want my t-shirt in the video. I'll mail it to you, man. I'll mail it to you. So anyways, guys, I love you in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and write your address down on the bottom when you send the video and, and I'll send it to you. Okay, all right, all right, in Jesus' name, I love you.